In this episode, we take you to the far reaches of southwest China's Yunnan province, experience some of the best tea in the whole of China, and prepare yourself for some colorful festivities with some of Lintang's ethnic minorities. All this coming right up on Travel Log. Well, we finally made it to Lintang in southwest Yunnan. It's been quite a tiring day. It took us about four hours from Beijing to get to Kunming, and then we had to get a connecting flight, which took us about 40 minutes to get here. And Lintang is famous for its ethnic minorities, its diverse cultures and customs. There's a lot to see. We're on the border with Myanmar. Exciting times. I'm Gareth Edwards. This is Travelog. Let's get going. Our journey begins along some pretty treacherous roads on our way to Xuanjiang County. Hey guys, so we just decided to make a quick pit stop here because it's quite a bumpy road up in these mountains. But we've left the city and we are now officially entering Xuanjiang County, which is famous for its tea and it's also famous for its four ethnic minorities. Anyway, let's go. Xuanjiang is a county of contrasting cultures, but even more impressive is its tea growing history that dates back over 3,500 years. It's here that you'll find some of the most expensive tea in the whole of China. The tea leaves themselves are larger here than on typical tea trees from other regions, which is precisely why tea in Xuanjiang is so popular. Given that tea culture is inextricably linked to the locals' daily lives in Xuanjiang, it won't be difficult for you to just go up to someone and just ask him to show you around. We're currently pretty high up, 1,700 meters in fact. And the reason why is because these tea trees are some of the oldest and most expensive in the whole of China. Check out this woman, she's one of the tea tree pickers that I asked permission before I eat these very expensive leaves. Oh, that's quite a, quite a bit strong taste, that's a very strong taste. You have to try it yourself. <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> She's going pretty high up. Whoa. Wonder if she's got insurance. Wonder how long these guys, they, they're doing this all day, so they're, they're used to it, but this is definitely a job where you need insurance. I tell myself that I must remember the painstaking effort that goes into picking these leaves the next time I'm sipping tea from Xuanjiang. Mmm. Wow. This tastes pretty good. And I'll tell you what, it took us a long time to get to Bingdao village, but the trip just got better. This stuff is some of the best stuff you can get in the whole of China. So it was definitely worth it. Coming back. Oh, how Our next port of call is Wanyao village. For over 200 years, the families of this village have almost exclusively focused on just one thing, pottery. And it's here that you'll find an ancient way of doing ceramics and pottery that's been passed down from generation to generation. Well, there's a strong smell of pine around here. And I guess a lot of it is used because 
for making the pottery and the porcelain and all the ceramics around here. Quite a lot's got to be used. And this particular one here, this dates back to Emperor Chen Long during the Qing Dynasty. And I tell you what, it's so hot around here. Before 2004, it would have taken us round about two days to get here, driving through mountainous terrain, treacherous terrain. But uh, it only took us 40 minutes, so that's why I look pretty rosy today. The villagers still use a traditional form of pottery that dates back to the Qing dynasty from 1644 to 1911 AD. Although there are many variations to making the pots, the general process will involve body blank, painting, carving, scraping, clinkering, polishing and requires a lot of skill. I'm definitely not going to try and give you a demonstration of how to make this because uh, A, Demi Moore is not here and uh, B, actually this skill uh, requires immense amount of talent and Mr. Dung here, you could call him the pottery king of Wanyao village and this skill has been passed down from generation to generation for hundreds of years so just watch, watch how he does it best. Seeing my chances, I asked Mr. Yang if I can go and have a go myself. After all, it can't be that difficult to do. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to buy this one. I think I'll have to buy it myself. <laughs> He's been so polite. He's like, yeah, it's really good, whatever. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, Jianda. There you have it. My first bit of uh, pottery business going on there. Fancy buying this? No? Okay, all right. Mr. Yang has been making these pots for, for his whole life and the customs here in Wanyao village have been going on for over 300 years. So it's not something that you can pretty much get off the bat. And you can actually see the difference. I mean, these are Mr. Yang's pots here. The outer coating is totally smooth and these are my ones there. Obviously you can see who the expert is. And Here's my little puppy right here. And each one of these compartments, you can fit in 56 of these. Uh, and what they'll do is they'll start off the fire at the bottom and gradually heat up each compartment. And hopefully, should have a pretty looking thing coming out at the other end. Oh, that's not going in. I'll, take, I'll keep this as a souvenir. Poor Mr. Yang. I felt absolutely terrible about that. Stay far away from the pot. Oh. Oh, sure. <laughs> it's actually really hot at the moment, but this is where the whole process starts. And uh, usually all together, I mean, the process is pretty long, but it will take about, around about 16 hours before, before all the pots are made and the porcelain is all made. And this guy is seriously hardcore to be doing this all day. Wow. Join us as we get up close and personal with the Hua villagers in Xuanzang and immerse yourself in the colourful culture and dance of the ethnic minorities in Linsang. All this coming up next on Travelog. In this episode, we take you to the far reaches of southwest China's Yunnan province, experience some of the best tea in the whole of China and prepare yourself for some colourful festivities with some of Linsang's ethnic minorities. All this coming right up on Travelog. The official name for Xuanzang is actually Xuanzang, Lahu, Hua, Bulang and Dai Autonomous County. It's a bit of a mouthful, but that's because the county is inhabited by these four ethnic minorities. One of the advantages I can clearly see is that they each get to celebrate each other's holidays as well as their own. On top of that, they also get to celebrate the public holidays in China, which basically means that theoretically, they should be on vacation for most of the year. I'll tell you what, this is such an amazing event. To be here 
with four different minorities that all live together, have been living together for, for hundreds of years. This is a special thing, very special event. Yeah. Yeah. Wazu women. Beautiful, beautiful voices. It'd be rude of me not to drink with each minority, so. Well, what a wonderful opportunity to be here with such a rich cultural mix. I'm in heaven. I am in heaven. I've been trying to do this for 30 minutes. Can't get the sheets. I'm picking a, a minority each time. This is a Nisha Wazurema. This is a Wa minority. This is another minority, the Dai minority. I like their dresses, very elegant. Hopefully they can have a better chance at teaching me how to do this incredibly difficult dance. It looks very easy, but it's difficult, I'm telling you. And it's tiring. The Bulang are usually, uh, they're very good at the drums, but this is not the time for their special dance yet. Dambulang la huwa. Got Dai. Got... We got Lahu again. Lahu are the ones with the, like the headgear, right? Uh, 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 she's got a cool hat. I want one of those. I think I'm covered. I've covered pretty much all the minorities here. Having a look. Oh, boy, oh, hey, sir. Having a look. Uh, Wazu, Wazu, these are the one minority again. And actually they're pretty important as well because Lin Tang is predominantly, this is the home of the Wa ethnic minority. Oh, I give up. They're too good for me. After our night of singing and dancing, we're up at the crack of dawn to see what Xuanzang has to offer. If we're lucky, we may get a chance to see the Wa people up close and personal going about their daily lives. Morning guys, so uh, just grabbing a bit of breakfast. Today is day two in Xuanzang County and last night it was pretty strange. We got to Xuanzang and we were treated to a local performance by the four ethnic minorities here, the Wa, the Bulang, the Lahu, and the Dai. And what I loved about it was the fact that even though each of them have different traditions, each of them could appreciate the other's dance whilst they were doing their special dance. Anyway, today there's a lot more to see with the minorities. Let's get going. When we enter the village, there's a feeling of excitement. It looks like we've caught an event about to happen. I noticed that the Wa have gathered around and the villagers have cut down some trees as part of their tradition of swing making. In the old days, there wouldn't have been a lot in terms of entertainment, so the Wa developed ways to amuse themselves, some of which have continued to this day. Historically, the Wa were known as a fierce people that inhabited the mountains of southwest Yunnan along the border with Myanmar. 
They were mostly feared because one of their ancient traditions involved ritualized beheadings of rival clans or outsiders such as the English during the 1930s. Putting that aside though, they were also known as a very festive people. In all important rituals and events like weddings and building houses, the people of the whole village will dress up, sing and dance in one big circle. In actual fact, the Wa need very little excuse to jump on their feet, start singing, start drinking and celebrating in general. From the moment we entered the village, we can sense the warmth of the Wa people. But at first, they're a little bit shy. One of them offers us a beer, and the moment we take our first swig, the villagers are all over us, and it's as if we're part of the crew. I'll tell you what, Obama would be proud of this kind of beer diplomacy. <laughs> Although the Wa, the Lahu and the Dai and the Bulang are all mountain people in Xuanzang, it's easy to differentiate who is who by simply looking at the way buildings are built. Each minority will live in their own compact communities, but straight away you can see the differences in architecture. Well, I can't believe it. It took them, they got up really early this morning, and it took to get this rope here, the rope was fine. But they got up early, had breakfast, and they... It took them four hours to bring that from a big tree over there, bring it all the way down, and uh, here it is. In Wa culture, when the host offers you your first drink, it's customary to pour a little bit onto the ground to celebrate the earth and the universe. Good way to start the celebrations, I say. It's just like Rice Krispies back in the UK. Enough of the eating though, and let's get on with some swinging. Naturally, first guy to go on the swing has to be the village chief. This is a rare time of excitement for the Wa, and they're going to make the most of this. Even the village elders and the ladies are going to participate in this special event. <laughs> Well, if the Wah can have their fun on the swing, why can't I? Before leaving though, the villagers insist on showing us one of their local Wah traditional hobbies. It's a game that involves doing tricks with a wooden spinning top that looks a little bit like a type of mushroom called Jizong. It's definitely not an easy game, but the Wa absolutely love it.
the aim of the game is to use the rope to spin the spinning top and then at the same time to do tricks with it and actually get it to throw up in the air and catch it when it comes back down. <laughs> Pretty hard to do actually. We'll get the pro to do it first, right? See how it goes. That is beautiful. Oh shit, you, you gotta roll it around really tightly. Oh, oh! I reckon uh, I could have done that myself a little bit better, but she's actually very good. Uh, oh. <laughs> I realize that this is more than just a relaxed hobby for the Wa. A lot of pride goes into making the spinning tops each with their own unique decorations. Once the game starts, you can see just how eager the participants are to show off their skills. <laughs> there you have it. The perfect example. Coming up next, we make our way to the Wa hometown of Tangyuan. Join us as we immerse ourselves in authentic Wa culture, from drinking games to tasting Tangyuan's culinary delights. All this on Travel Log. Wow, these guys are pretty hard at work there. Not an easy life, definitely not. To have to grow crops on quite a steep slope, that's not easy. It's another two and a half hours of zigzagging roads to Tangyuan from Chuanjan. Tangyuan is the home of the Wa, and it's here that you'll find the biggest concentration of Wa people in Yunnan. It's also here that the Monihei Festival will take place. Monihei literally means to touch you into black. In tradition, Wa people believe that black is beauty, and the aim of the festival is to emphasize just that. Uh, uh, people look slightly different around here, and the reason is we're in Tangyang County, which is home to the Wa minority, and it's on the border with Myanmar, so it's pretty awesome. We've only been here for five minutes, and already I've had someone come up to me Give me, well, offer me cigarettes, I don't smoke, but, uh, well, nice people already. Eager to catch some of the local culinary delights, we make our way over to one of Tang Yuan's most popular Wa restaurants. <laughs> The Wa are a cheerful singing people, and before we can tuck into our meals, the Wa chief sings one of his traditional songs. Only a few hours earlier, we listened to the very same songs in our car. It's so wonderful to hear it being sung live within an authentic Wa setting. Wow. Oh, good Lord. It's customary in Wa culture to be able to, well, you have to use your hands to eat with the food. And, uh, 
Shao here can obviously eat a lot better than I can, but if you do come here, make sure you ask the locals how to eat properly, otherwise you're going to look like this. I think it's fine by me, actually, because uh, I'm a, not too good with the old chopsticks anyway. Suffice to say, the Wa people aren't all about the singing. With a gleeful look in their eyes, they're only too happy to subject me to one of their most grueling traditional drinking games. As long as they sing, you basically have to drink. And all it takes is one of the Wa to feel like singing again, and before you know it, you're on to another round of songs and shots. <laughs> Blimey, that's one heck of a drinking game. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, feeling quite lightheaded at the moment. But uh, I guess, I wasn't told before, but I guess the, the aim of the, the drinking game was just to drink until the end of the song was, was over, except they just carried on going and carried on going. Anyway, great meal. Oh, let's get out of here. And now it's back to town. Every year, around the beginning of May, and only a few days after the Dai Minority Songkrao Water Festival, you will find literally thousands of Wa people gathering in Tangyuang and getting ready for their own special celebration, Moni Hei. And this year, so are we. Well, it's been an absolutely awesome experience so far. We managed to get a taste, a little taste of the local culture and traditions here in Linsang. But the real reason we came here is because of this, the Moni Hei Festival. And tonight is the opening ceremony. But you know what? We'll just have to find out some other time because three, two, one. See you in the next episode.